Chuck, Gary. Hey. Star Talk Sports Edition. We got to do another explainer. All right. Nice. The, the time has come, and it's something none of us have any expertise in. We're going to talk about cardiac emergency, Ooh. which has been all the news, especially, of course, since the uh, incident in recent weeks of uh, Damar Hamlin in yeah. the NFL just dropping down, <sighs> needing CPR to, just to get him off the field and take him to the hospital, leaving everyone mystified. What happened? What are they doing to him? It, will it happen to me? All of the above. So yep. we need a fast explainer on this, and we combed the world. And we found someone who's just right for this. We've got medical doctor Lippy Roy. Lippy, welcome to Star Talk Sports Edition. Hi, everyone. It's so good to be hey. here. Good to see you again, Neil. Excellent. Yes, we actually just met at a separate conference, you know, a, a few weeks ago. And I said, yeah, yeah, I want her for Star Talk. So thanks for this fast turnaround on your schedule. And what I particularly like about your background is not only that you are a physician of internal medicine, but anybody could be that. You're also <laughs> a master's in public health. And public health has been so much in the news throughout COVID, throughout anything else that we're all trying to do in a society. And so the combination of your medical doctor's background and your public health background, I find to be completely ideal for so many questions that we have. And I just want to let people know that you're a frequent commenter on uh, on MSNBC, NBC, and for Forbes, and you've got a YouTube show. And let me get the name of that right: Health, Humor, and Harmony. Ooh, nice. Three H's. I see yes. what you did there. Uh. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, sounds like a rap group from. Uh, oh. <laughs> it sounds like a Compton rap group that's a lot more positive. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's not bone thugs. I'm, I'm and not harmony. that. It's I'm not that cool. Humor though. and harmony. That's right. <laughs> uh, I wish I was that cool. I'm not as cool as you, Chuck. No way. Uh, all right. So, Lippy, uh, in the few minutes that we have for this explainer, could you uh, sort of unpack clinically the difference between cardiac arrest, a heart attack? and heart failure, is there a difference? I know most of us use them interchangeably, but it seems to me that they're not all the same when you're coming from where you stand. Yeah, so first of all, thank you so much, Neil, for having me on your show. I'm so glad to be here. You, this is a topic that's so important to me. As an internal medicine physician, I actually have cared for many, many patients with all forms of heart disease. I was telling Chuck and Gary, your producer Gary earlier that personally I'm affected by this. My own father had a heart attack 20 years ago and is now struggling with consequences or complications such as heart failure. Heart failure. So um, it, this is a, a really important topic. And you're right, Neil, these terms are used interchangeably, but they mean different things. Um, so, uh, and before I start, because humor matters to me and then Chuck is going to care about this, I want to start with a silly joke. Why did the patient refuse a much needed cardiac transplant? Oh, that's easy because uh, he lived in America and we don't have good health care. <laughs> so, okay. That's the real reason. But the joke reason is that he had a change of heart. Uh -huh. uh, okay. no. All right. So I know, Chuck, you can totally criticize that from a comedian standpoint. Oh, but there's look, no, cardi no need. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so Neil asked, so it's cardiac arrest. We all know that NFL uh, safety uh, Buffalo Bills player DeMar Hamlin struggle, uh, experienced a sudden cardiac arrest on mm. the field. That simply means that your heart abruptly stops pumping and so that the lack of blood flow to the brain and uh, other vital organs and without immediate medical attention specifically cpr and defibrillation the person will lose consciousness become disabled and could die so then what's heart attack a heart attack is when the blood vessels that supply the heart which are called coronary arteries when those blood vessels get blocked either from like a cholesterol plaque or a clot that a clogged artery can no longer supply much needed blood to that part of the heart. And if it if it's for a short time, then that's ischemia, which means low oxygen to that part of the heart. But if it's prolonged period of no blood flow to that part of the heart, then that's called infarction or MI is myocardial infarction, which is the technical term for a heart attack. And a heart attack, by the way, is a leading cause of cardiac arrest. And then Neil asked about heart failure. So mm. heart failure really means that your heart just is not pumping okay. sufficiently or it's not filling with blood appropriately. And as a result, vital parts of your vital organs like your brain and other organs aren't getting sufficient um, blood. And so heart failure 
factor is the leading cause of heart failure actually is um, coronary artery disease. So, okay, wow. so, heart, so heart failure is something that um, this, the heart is not living up to its specs is what's happening there. Mm -hmm. and exactly. And of course there the consequences to that. So what actually happened to Damlin? So great question. So we know, by the way, let me just also as a disclaimer say, I've never personally treated him. So I, so I don't know, I don't have access to his mm -hmm. actual medical okay. records, but however, there have been enough, there's been well, enough I, I information. I thought you, you never treated him before the event. I was like, huh, covering your ass there, huh? <laughs> no. <that's laughs> oh, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Never before, now, after. Let me just also share. I don't know if your your listeners know this, but he has just been released from Buffalo General Hospital. He is now discharged home. I cannot begin to tell you what an absolute miracle this is because statistically, nine out of 10 cardiac arrests that happen in the field have an adverse and actually fatal outcome. So the fact that he's alive is because of two reasons. One, he had immediate chest compressions and fibrillation or that defibrillator, the AED, um, and the fact that he's a young and otherwise completely healthy guy. That's what really worked in his favor. But he, Neil, he had Damlin, Damar Hamlin experienced a sudden cardiac arrest on the field. We speculate it's because that, that tackle triggered what was called commodio cordis, which is, again, a fancy word to say basically um, uh, an agitation of the heart. So the timing of that collision happened at a, at a cycle of, of the electrical impulse so that it caused a disruption and the heart just stopped. That's all that we know. Beyond that, there could be other information, but the uh, hospital hasn't really disclosed it. But that's what we know so far so, in terms of his cardiac so arrest. It's, so it's kind of like uh, if you're at a party and somebody... Uh, not bumps into the DJ table and the record skips, but kicks the plug out of the wall and the music stops. That's so, a great yes, Chuck, metaphor. It's exactly Chuck. like great that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, doc doctor, you've, we've, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, there's okay. another term I hear called blunt force trauma, which would describe an NFL tackle. Um, so when you've got this event that happens tragically, what are the primary care must-dos for the first responders who get there assess, decide what treatment is required, how, what, what are they thinking? What is their primary must-dos in this event? Because this is what's really saved his life. Well, I, well, if there's any kind of positive out of this event, uh -huh. look, I'm sad that this happened to Damar, but I'm really glad that he's doing well. But what it really did is bring really na national, if not global, attention to CPR or really B BLS, which is basic life support. Yeah. Everybody and their mother should be trained in basic life support because you never know when somebody's going to collapse. Do you think anyone expected this elite 24-year-old athlete to just collapse like that? So, But this could happen in your house, mm -hmm. on the sidewalk. Everybody needs to know CPR. The training is free. You can go to First Aid, AH, American Heart Association, and get that training. So, so Gary, that. that's Excellent. one thing. Mm -hmm. Learning mm -hmm. yeah. CPR is life-saving. You do not have to have the letters MD behind your name to do that. And you could be 10 years old, you can be 89 years old to learn CPR. A. B. Have AEDs, automated external defibrillators nearby. I don't know if every house should have it, but if you live with people that are at higher risk for having heart disease, heart attack, sudden collapse, stroke, get an AED and know how to operate it. Operating is actually really simple. You literally press the on button and then it tells you what to do. So those two basic um, strategies, uh, uh, Gary, are going to be key. But really, BLS will teach you, uh, check for a pulse. Are they responsive? Are they breathing? Those are the basic things, Gary. So as, so a, as, a, as a positive, Neil, um, the defibrillator, my father had a heart attack on a transatlantic flight and the cabin crew pulled out a defibrillator and brought him back. So yeah. yep. to, to talk to the doctors, you know, that's the experience at my personal level of understanding exactly why that is so necessary. So, I mean, I, I look, Neil, at, um, yes, we've got a young athlete, a professional athlete, who's, whose life is not more important than someone else's life, but the focus of attention and media is there. Imagine now what it must be like to be the chief physician, the first responder, the person responsible. Doctor, please, because not everybody looks at it from this point of view. What goes through the mind of someone who is charged, pun intended, bad one, yeah. with bringing this man back to a safe and healthy place. Uh, yeah. So uh, look, uh, at the end of the day, 
we're trained professionals. This is what we're trained to do. It's to save lives at the one extreme, but really improve the quality of life. Uh, that said, I'm sure that the, th there were many of trainers that were feet, uh, just a few feet away. So th that's another major reason mm -hmm. why he he had this positive outcome. Um, but yeah, it's, it's nerve wracking. I I've been in ICUs, CCUs, um, emergency departments. I've been uh, in homeless shelters, working in clinics. Wait, what is a CCU? What is a CCU? Coronary cardiac care unit and I okay. intensive care unit. So I okay. it's it, it, CCU is just specifically for um, cardiac uh, patients uh -huh. that are critically right. ill. Yeah, mm -hmm. my, my father, brother have all been in CCUs. I rotated through CCUs. I also wow. trained at Duke, which is very a major cardiac center and a, tra a place for where people go to train in cardiology. So, uh, but it can be very nerve wracking, even for healthcare professionals, Gary, mm. uh, a, a, as a doctor, even I get uh, nervous, but you know, your adrenaline and uh, adrenaline and effort, epinephrine pumping up so high that yeah. you just, you just act. The impact that this had emotionally and psychologically and mm. on the team teammates, culturally, the family the whole, members, the whole and landscape. even culturally. Yeah. It's yeah. totally shocking. Yeah. But this is why I'm glad we're having this conversation mm -hmm. because just so your viewers all understand, heart disease is still the number, number one, one killer of people in the United States and globally. Mm. Number one. But the good news is we know how to prevent it. So so <laughs> that's why I'm yes. glad we're having and this no conversation. One's going to, no one's going to take the steps. To, to okay. Prove. So, Doctor, <laughs> I, we, because we don't know the case specifics for Damar Hamlin, um, there is a condition, and I'll probably mangle it, it's hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which is a gene mutation, I believe, that we have seen athletes all of a sudden just drop down dead. Once they're in an athletic event, or they just finish and bang, something goes completely wrong. Am, am I right that 85% of the people who have this condition go undiagnosed? Yeah, so I, I want to make sure we don't, we're not conflating issues. So when a, 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 an, an athlete can, you're right, collapse, but there can be multiple reasons for that. Hypertrophic, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, pretty much as the name explains, hypertrophic just means enlarged, big, right. cardio, heart, and myopathy is really any type of dysfunction or weakness of the muscle. So in HCM, let's just call it that, um, right. it, the, the, the heart muscle gets really enlarged. And as you pointed out, uh, Gary, most of the, co the, the cause for it is genetic. Right. Um, and the, the heart, the muscle, particularly that left ventricle, which is the one that pumps, uh, is a pretty muscular uh, part of the heart uh, chamber. In, in, in HCM, the, the walls, the septum, which separates the left and right ventricle, that wall and the left ventricle, the walls get really thick. Um, again, there are actually over... 30 genes that are involved and hundreds of mutations within those, I think, 15 genes that are involved. But um, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy can lead to um, a cardiac arrest because it's associated with, it can be associated with fatal arrhythmias, like right. V-fib or V-tac, ventricular fibrillation or attack. How do we diagnose it? How do we know in advance so that you don't put them out on the field and die? Yeah, it's a great question. So basically what you're asking, so how do you screen for HCM? Screen. The thing is that HCM is actually really rare. Um, you know, one in 500 or maybe 600,000 uh, to maybe about 1 million people in America have HCM. The, yeah, this important thing to remember is very, very few people which, with HCM actually get sudden cardiac arrest, maybe 1%. Okay, so it's a very, very rare event. Most people can live long and healthy lives. Uh, but screening... Um, I actually don't know if all professional athletes get screened for it, but the, the most common ways to screen for HCM are through an EKG, which is an electrocardiogram. You put electrodes on the chest or an echocardiogram, which is uh, at our TTE, which is really an ultrasound of the heart. Oh, got it. Got it. And, and so I have a question, a statistical question before we, because well, we got to wrap very soon. Uh, in, foot, in American football, People are tackled all the time in their chest. It, this is not a rare thing. And in fact, everyone who saw that tackle said that was a normal tackle. So if there's the risk of this pressure on the chest happening at the exact wrong time in the heartbeat cycle, why doesn't this happen way more often in this game? The short answer to that, Neil, is that we don't know, but I will tell oh, you. Oh, I like really, that. <laughs> but great. It's Look, true, great. That's it's very true. honest. But, right? but, 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 st but statistically, this is really a rare event. To your point, Neil, these, these collisions happen 
all the time. It is the, the core of the game. And yet, unlike some of these other conspiracy theorists who will say that, oh, the this cardiac arrest, these athletes are dropping like flies and they're, they're associating it with the COVID vaccine, which is totally false. There is no connection. Um, we don't really know, but it's it's truly a rare, rare situation. So the commodio cordis, uh, you, you know, that, that sudden agitation of the heart, the sudden cardiac arrest are extremely rare events. Look, I, I'm a big fan of hockey. Hockey collisions happen all the time. Do they all drop like flies and they have cardiac arrest? No, they don't. So it was really a rare fluke event. Uh, these athletes are otherwise extremely healthy people. So, so now do these professional organizations need to do more screening? I, I don't really know. But again, it's really, really rare. Um, yeah. So we've had it in my, my version of football, Neil, we've had players collapse on in the middle of a game. But greatly, uh, there's two famous ones. Denmark's Christian Eriksen and an English football player called Fabrice Mwamba. And a cardio specialist walked out of the stand, <sighs> treated him there and then saved his life. That's without getting hit, right? They just yeah, collapse. There's no, there's no collision. This just right. is a collapse. Right. Right. Um, yeah. So the, 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 the public attention, the consciousness of this now being an issue what will it, be, that, it will it, be it, quite like, rare. Like Lippy said, it takes yeah. that to, to <clears throat> raise sadly, public consciousness. Sadly, it right. does. But hopefully yeah. there'll right. be a positivity comes from this tragic event. Right. And, uh, and Ho people hopefully are the aware. Hopefully the positivity is that people will take uh, better care to learn more about how to how to prevent it for themselves. Because mm -hmm. heart disease is the, the number one killer. And, uh, you know, as you get older, you know, things like congestive heart failure and, um, and, and, and uh, heart attack are, are very, very common. And when, when you take care of yourself through all the crap we say, you know, your proper diet, exercise, all this stuff that nobody wants to hear, you know, you're extending your life. You really are. Yeah. It's, it's that simple. Ending on up notes here. So yeah. very excellent. Libby, a delight to have you here. And uh, the fact that you are uh, uh, active in public health makes you one of society's heroes. And I, I just tip my hat to your Thank entire you. career of what you've done for homeless people and uh, people in prison, uh, just the general health conditions of people who need it most. And all that you think and all that you do and all that you've shared with the public, just keep at it. And we're going to come back to you for more, for sure. Yay. Uh, I'm thrilled to hear this. Can I just say quickly, the three biggest risk factors to decrease a person's risk for heart disease, it's high blood pressure, high cholesterol, smoking. Get those yep. under control. You will decrease your risk of, of getting heart disease, heart attack, and maybe even a cardiac arrest. I'm so happy to be here with you guys. You guys are so great, funny, smart. I'm, I'm so honored to be on your show. All right, we got it. That's, that's all oh, the time we have. Uh, Libby, it's great to have you. And, of course, Chuck and Gary. Uh, not not good so to have great you right to have there. us. No, uh, but no, no, not you guys. It's a pleasure. No. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a Star Talk Sports Edition explainer. Uh, what's going on with our heart? I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist. Keep working out.